So um, my name is Amon Claiborne. Um, born and raised Louisiana. Who that? Okay. <laughs> Go Tigers. You know, anything, you. anything Louisiana, I'm all about it. Um, but born and raised Louisiana. Um, okay. So my background is pretty much uh, um, went to college at Northwestern State um, High School in Alexandria, Louisiana. So some of the guys who may listen to this who are part of our sports uh, group may know what that's it because I most of them I know from high school and in different yeah. um, sports from in Louisiana. Uh, so most of the people on sports debaters, you know, probably, huh? Yeah, I mean, if I don't know them in some capacity, it, the sports world is so small that you know somebody who knows somebody. So it pretty much is Dex. you always have something to talk about. <laughs> I mean, to this day, um, you got something to talk about with anybody because it's just so relatable, you know, in, in certain walks of life. So, um, okay, but yeah, and, man. Um, in, in, in high school, so you said that you did go to uh, what college was that again? Northwestern State. Northwestern State. All right, cool. What mm -hmm. uh, classes did you take? Or what your profession? So my my, uh, my major there was, um, mm -hmm. you know, just to give you a little background, I started off Rocky. I originally went for business. Okay. That, didn't, that didn't work out so well. Um, I just wasn't into just like the cookie cutter business classes. Okay. Um, so I transitioned into social science, which was a little bit of psychology and um, history. Okay. Um, which it sparked my interest enough to keep me, I'm, I'm more so like I'm always a go, go, go person. So it kept me okay. um, interested enough just to, you know, be able to get through uh, college and kind of figure out where I wanted to go from there. Okay. What kind of turned you off with um uh, that first part with the business class? What kind of? Uh, everything was just so straightforward, cookie cutter, just like, I mean, business is business, you know, it's, it's just yeah. nothing really grabbed Can't me. My really... brother mm -hmm. um, went to school also for business. Um, which was what his degree is in, but nothing really just like grasped me to like keep me um, into it. We were always in the same building. It was like nothing. It was just like <laughs> always just this routine, 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 routine. Of it got old fast. It got old fast. Okay. And um, on this new one that you, uh, the next classes that you took, they said the one that grabbed your attention, what was it? That um, psychology, man, it's just like mm -hmm. the mind, like just the mind, like it's so much, so intricate. So like, and you talk about history. History is like ever evolving, and it's just so much that you can learn. I saw something that you posted on Facebook about the pyramids, yeah. and it's just like things like that. Like you can sit down mm -hmm. and talk to somebody about just small things like that for so long exactly. outside of just like a, a standard business conversation. Uh, and obviously, it's more to that in business, but just the um, history and psychology is just so you know fascinating and intriguing to me. So. It, okay. it, it kept me interested enough to get a degree in it. Okay. And um, so what is your uh, profession now? Uh, my profession now, I work in the um, medical device world. Um, okay. The medical device world has a lot of different components. Um, I work on the sales side, consulting. Um, so in, in that is, man, it's, again, that every day something is different. I work in surgery with surgeons um, from GYN to orthopedic to um, colon, rectal, um, just a, a oh, wow. different group of surgeons all day, every day. Um, so it keeps you on your toes title. the whole day. Oh yeah. Day. Like, yeah. It's, it's, it's high level conversations. It's always just having to be in the know, um, mm -hmm. talking to a lot of different personnel. And it's again, that grind of something different every day, like something that can, and is that's intriguing. Like the human body, there's my body and like your body. So you can go in and expect, something and get the totally unexpected, you know? So, um, that's what I do It's on the sales side. So my company, um, it's applied medical It's based in uh, mm -hmm. Santa Margarita, California. Okay. Um, so headquarters in California, um, orange County and, um, yeah, it's a medical engineering company. We make different type of products that are used in the OR, um, different type of, um, things that, you know, use every single day that you just don't think about that you would need someone to help a surgeon be able to use this product. Okay. Are uh, you want to walk us into like a day to day um, of your job? Yeah, man. And, and just to uh, make sure you don't, you don't hear that clicking going on in the back. Do you? I did. It was like some message or something like that. Yeah. I, I gotta make it, it's it done now though. It's only like two or three clicks. Okay. Okay, just wanted to make sure. 
Um, but yeah, man, the day to day is, and for me is, um, obviously surgery starts at seven thirty in the morning. So I'm waking up at seven thirty, or well, being in the OR at seven thirty in the morning. Okay. I'm kind of checking to see what the day um, brings. I work at maybe. 10 to 12 different hospitals in the greater Tampa Bay area. So I manage um, 12 different accounts. Um, I have three of the biggest hospitals that's in the Tampa Bay area. So it's, uh, it's uh, a very broad thing. Yeah. And uh, is that like a traveling type of, you know how like traveling nurse kind of like the same thing? So you can, so um, good question. Um, So, the, the most I've traveled maybe is like an hour to an hour and a half outside of where I'm currently at. Mm-hmm. But now I'm so, um, you know, I've been promoted two times. So I pretty much get to hone kind in on that your, exact, okay. yeah, what I what I want to do and how I want to kind of approach the day to day. So the most I can travel is probably like 35 minutes and I'm traveling and looking at the you know rivers and oceans. So it's not a <laughs> yeah, not I heard a bad, Florida is beautiful. It's not a bad travel. Okay. And um let's see here. On so you want to explain to us kind of like what the good day is and a bad day is um in your yeah, profession. Man. Yeah, man. Again, again, a good question. So um I'll go to the I'll start with the uh, the bad day, right? Um so okay. I've I've been with my um current company for about two years. Um uh, got hired right three months before COVID hit. And it sounds like crazy to say it was two years ago, but it was two years ago, man. That's, so, <laughs> that's even crazy to think about. Like yeah. two years been going through this, man. So um, hopefully, it ends so I worked my, my previous company for um, about a, a year and nine months prior to coming to this company. And you talk about grind. Um, the grind is it's that, that story of the grind to get to where you want to go, but you got to go through that grind, man. I would be in the OR at 6 a.m. in the morning and could leave at 3 a.m. at night and have to be back up at 6 in the morning to go back to work. Oh. Yeah, on call, on call every other weekend, working 70-hour weeks, 80-hour weeks. I've worked before. And, this is like um, on short notice too? Like oh, you yeah. Can't even- oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is not, um, if, if you're on call, which you're on call during the week and on the weekend sometimes. So they say, hey, we got an emergent surgery. You got to be here get everything that we need for your product and to be set up and be able to succeed. I mean, it's emergent. Like it's not anything to play around. If they call you, they want you there in a certain amount of time. So, um, yeah, man, it's, uh, that, that was, that's the ugly, that's the ugly in the day that I've been in a surgery for 16 hours in, in a day. Back again the next the day. Oh. Yeah. And had to come back again the next day, you know, but um again that's just that grind like to get to where you like i understood like all the time where i'm doing it because i'm i always look at the you know the bigger pictures like man like this is going to take me to where i can I, obviously have the freedom that i have in my job now and that yeah. you know turns to the good and it's like that ever changing always being able to um you know evolve in your career mm-hmm. and on a day-to-day basis evolving looks like being able to kind of like tailor your day how you want it to be like you know, having such a good relationship with the surgeons that you don't have to be there all the time. So that now you took two to three hours out your day where you could have been standing in there trying to build their relationship, build their rapport, and you kind of like tailor it to, you know, benefit what you want to do. They don't care about if you're in the OR all day. They care about if they're making money. So if the surgeon is still using <laughs> your products, then yeah. you make it money. So they're not, you know, looking at you um, and or breathing down your back. But yeah, the, the good day is pretty much, you know, and just being able to tailor your day and not um, being pulled in so many different directions. And if you are good at what you do, a lot of people are there to help you out because you build those relationships along the way. Okay. And um, on that same day, can you be called like maybe that, that OR place that you're working at only needed you for like four hours? Can you get called yeah. again that very same day to a different place? I've been called in. So I've been called. So I've got off at maybe seven. So maybe got to work at six 30 that morning, left at five 30, was called in at nine 30, left again at 12. And I've been called again at two in the morning to go back and, and still have to be up there next morning Jeez. to go back. I've been <laughs> called in. I've literally taken a shower, uh-huh. got in the bed, laid down. And within 20 minutes been called back in. Call. Okay. It's, it's <laughs> Is there at any point that you could be like, hey, I had like two or three already for the day and 
They will not, one. Yeah, they're gonna be like, all right, we got two or three more people waiting in line, man. This is such <laughs> a competitive industry okay. to get into, like no joke. Like um okay. so in saying that it's like hindsight's twenty twenty, so it's laughing to joke about it, but it was tough <laughs> being in it. But bro, yeah. like it literally is somebody waiting to take your job. Like it's it's like that's why they love athletes, because it's like that grind of like I mean, in order to make it where you, you know, make a good living for yourself, your family, you got to grind it out. But if you don't want to do it, they have 200. I think for the application that I put in, it had like 795 applicants. Like, for, for yeah, one they position. just waiting too. Yep. In, in Tampa, Florida, where you can have all your sports, all your outdoor living, all everything. Like people are coming out of college dreaming to get a job in Tampa, you know, at this mm. point. Like when I got out of college, I would never looked at Tampa. Now yeah. it's such a growing city, like Charlotte area, Tampa, the, you know, like the Austin, like those major cities where you yeah. really n- like never heard anything about, like people are mm-hmm. flocking to and, and so, like, you know, it's, yeah. they're waiting for, to take your job. So if you don't want to do it, <laughs> don't show up and <laughs> somebody, somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you said about, you never really looked into Tampa. So what, um, where, how'd you even find out about this job? So um, the job per se, um, the job per se, it was just, I actually applied for Atlanta, you know, okay. and so I never really applied for the job for Tampa. I'm telling you, like, I never looked to stay in Tampa. So when I, mm-hmm. you know, that's a story for, you know, probably later on as we talk, but I never looked to stay in Tampa. I came here for work. And so it was nothing that I was like hard set on me and my, my wife is born and raised in um, chattanooga tennessee which is like maybe an hour and 45 minutes from t- um atlanta so we're like yeah we're gonna go be close to family mm-hmm. and um i applied for for atlanta and i guess the manager or the director of this zone or area got my application he's like no i want to keep him here and i did I, that's all i could say it's like all right you can't say no i'm like <laughs> i already live here it's not like he's making it hard on me you yep. know, so I I stayed, and it, it was a good decision. And um, did your is your family out there too? Oh yeah, my um wife, three kids. Um, my daughter originally came, you know, once we once I left college and got a chance to uh, be on the practice squad for the uh, Bucks. They came, and we never left. And since um, we're on this topic now with the family stuff, um, so how does this um affect kind of like your time with your family? Since you said like it's a fast paced type of job, but they're always needing you. So um, starting off, it was hard. Um, no lie, man. It was literally hard. I mean, not, not only on myself, but, you know, on my wife just. And at that time, we had one kid. So that's that was the blessing in disguise, you know, so to say, because I have three now. So there's no way, you know, being, getting up at, you know, it's, I don't care who you are. Like, you know, you can have a smile on your face all you want to. But, you know, having to you know wake up with three kids and always, you know, having something to do, it's not easy. Um so we only had my daughter back then, which made it a lot easier than it could have been. Um, okay. And so it it that was the tough part. And again, um, I told my wife, and you just talk about th- different things, and we understood like, and I helped her to understand like the grind that you have to go through to just make it to that next, you know, height in the career. And once you get there, I mean, you hear so many people talk about it. If you really do your research and and, and reach out to the right people, network, and they kind of set you up for what to expect. So I never went in it not expecting yeah. what I expected, you know. Okay. Cool. And um, all right. So I don't know if you're going to feel comfortable about talking about, like, how you guys get paid, like, salary and all that stuff. Um, How do you – how does that work? Is it, like, hourly salary? No, man. Um, so we, we're salary. We're salary employees okay. um, and we get paid quarterly um, commissions and and okay. and not per se my commission checks. Um, you know, I can tell you how much I make. It's not really a big deal. It's you know, okay. money is money. It's not like, you know, <laughs> a big deal. Uh, but, you know, this can be a very re- rewarding career and they want people who are grind, who, who grind it out, who's driven because they know once that money comes like, people you know it's just like i mean we see it every day i mean in sports like once people get paid they kind of chill and like lay back it's like man i got this paycheck i can relax a little bit and the thing about this job is obviously you're not making millions you know but a good salary is you know 130 to 150 thousand dollars like in a year 
And that's grinding it out, you know, with your base, obviously. And then you get four commission checks in a year. So every quarter you get a commission check. And it's commission based. Um, but you know, in order to to make those commissions, like you gotta grind it out. Right. And it, and if you don't make it, then if you don't make it, the next quarter you're getting put on a, a plan where you got three months to make your quota. If not, then they're finding the next person because they understand like the driven in this industry are the ones who succeed and they make money too. They you know. So this is like a very rewarding job if you're a hard working guy, always on your toes, yeah. grinding, hungry all the time. I can I can um say this um, my last quarter um, was my mo most rewarding I, obviously like COVID died down a little bit before it sparked back up um, I was number two in the country in a product category and out of like 400 people and it paid me a handsome amount I probably got paid uh, I would say like thirty seven thousand dollar commission check in three months and again that's not a small thing but oh, yeah, no. it took a year to start building those blocks so if you're not grinding for that year to get to you know where you start making that kind of money, then they'll know real fast. They're like, yeah, you're not going to get there. And they want to pay you because they know when they pay you, then they're making a lot more money than you making. That's true. That's true. Um, since you are very busy about with your job, family, how do you even balance it? I see you in your shirt already, the American flag football, and I see you post yeah. about it a lot. Um, yeah. How do you even have time to do that, man? So um, priorities, man. Um, that I'm, I'm asked to play all the time. Every weekend, somebody's in my DMs like, man, come play with my team, come play with my team. I play with a main uh, squad called Kings of Florida. And if I'm playing with them, I know we're playing comp competitive and I know we're playing for money. So that's <laughs> literally like, there you go, yep. I, I could tell my wife, hey, I'm going to play for money. I'm not out here just playing for just fun. I, mean, fun I, yep. I, would, I would love to play for fun all the time. But um, with three kids, daughter playing travel softball. Um, okay. It, it's not always easy to just like walk away and be like, "Hey, I'm just going to play for for fun." Like, what's yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I play uh, uh, travel football. Um, it's yep. very competitive and it's very rewarding. Um, we just won a championship for two hundred thousand dollars, the biggest one you can win, Congrats. and the biggest league you can win it in. And um, yeah, man, it's 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 a fun gig. Is that um all over like the whole U.S. that you guys go against, or just in Florida? Oh no, that's whole U.S. That's any team that you can. If you make you make it out of California, it has California based team. I mean, pretty much everywhere. Um, if you make it out of your bracket or division where you're at regionally, and um, you kind of just continue to move on up. You know, we are we're fortunate enough to play against top competition all year. I mean, Florida, it's, it's great, beautiful weather year round. So. I mean, it's not a secret how much speed comes out of Florida. You know, yeah. I mean, it's always the debate, like, who has the best <laughs> athletes? So Texas, Florida, California. And California, you know, yep. It's top you know, it's not, a, it's not a secret. So, I mean, what do you think these guys do when they don't, when they're done playing college or they didn't even make it to college? They, you know, re living regular job. They still run fast. <laughs> like, <Yep. laughs> they, they still are fast. It's not like they just get slower because they're doing something else. So, I mean, it's. It's competitive all year, and it's literally like flag football here. I never expected it a day in my life. Mm -hmm. I was a uh, funny story. I was in um, coming from work. I always went to LA Fitness to work out after work um, when I had time. Okay. See this guy, he's built. I'm like, this dude look like he plays football somewhere. You just like see different people, and he's like, man, this dude like he plays football somewhere. And yeah. come to find out. I, I asked him, I was like, hey, you guys play football somewhere? He's like, yeah, man, we play flag. And I was like, ah, I, I don't know about that. I mean, I ain't <laughs> never played flag. Like, I come from tackle, like, what's flag football? Yep. And um, and so I leave, like, 15 miles up the road. I go to Walmart, going on my way home, and I see the same person. And I was like, <laughs> nah, man, yeah. like, God talking to me. Like, I got to ask yep. him, like, what y'all playing at? This dude gives me the number to, like, the guy who has the team. And okay. I like grinding my way up through the ranks in Florida. Like mm -hmm. I, none of these guys knew me, and okay. they, I literally busted them every time on the field at DB receiver, and they started asking me to be on their teams. And I made it to obviously the team who you know was in the ranking of being the best team, and we went mm -hmm. undefeated, first undefeated team in states. We won like twenty three and O, or won every state championship, um, and like pretty much the most decorated team in Florida at this point. Um, and yeah, it all came from me going to LA fitness and seeing someone who See looked like. <laughs>
And I ever seen him again. <laughs> and literally, I just, I was like, man, I just know where I, I didn't even call my wife. I was like, I saw him again. <laughs> I got to, I got to now. <laughs> um, you want to elaborate too. more to that? So when you got the phone, so people that's interested in into getting into this American flag football, um, yeah. how do you get into that? So um, you can go on the AFFL.com. It's um, American Flag Football League. And, and so it, they're actually promoting now where they have a lot of different leagues and trying to, like, um, couple with the NFL to, like, create leagues in, like, um, different cities, major cities. But as far as the, the, the growth of the league, it started off as a million-dollar prize before COVID. Like, the, the these guys are playing for a million dollars with – Michael Vick playing, um, Chad Ochocinco. So y'all um, not Jason playing with no scrubs Moore. then? Yeah, no, it, it it's not. Um, Danny Warfield, uh, the Heisman Trophy went quarterback back from Florida back in the day, and and Nate Robinson was in it. You know, he didn't get knocked out in this tournament, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they boxing. So <laughs> <laughs> well, he did play. <laughs> uh, no, nah, but yeah, it, so it it started off as like that popular thing then COVID mm-hmm. hit so obviously like so much momentum that they had building up to then um dropped off my first time playing in it was in 2019 and it was uh so surreal because we felt like we had a team that to make it all the way to the top and we lost the first game in New Jersey first round and that literally just lit a fire in us and from then on we kind of just built the team the family mm-hmm. and we just grinded it out man yeah we had a we got a, a pretty decent spot Okay. And um, so we talked about how to get into the American flag football joint. So what about um, people that's interested on what you, we just talked about for like the past 10, 15 minutes about um, being a medical consultant? If somebody wants to be going to that route, how would you um, like starting off a college um, to where you at now? A couple of advice. <laughs> Excuse me. Man, I would just say um, if you're interested, I've always – network um look for people in your area who are doing exactly what no matter what you do i mean look for people in your area who are doing exactly what you can can, like want to do um i messaged probably like 800 people on linkedin you know how many people probably got back to me about being in the field how many maybe a 10 out of 800 this is no joke i can go i can scroll through i've shown my wife i've shown other people i can scroll through but I always say the 10 who message care about actually helping me. So I'm okay with that. Like, I don't care about the 800, who, the, the 790 who didn't. The 10 people who messaged me cared about helping because that's why they messaged back. And I just, you know, gravitated towards those um, people who wanted to help network as much as possible and kind of just got like a mentorship just of like people who cared about giving me insight, advice. And in anything you do, if you have just those small group of people who like can just prepare you like i said at going into the job with working those long hours they prepare me for that situation and understanding in different type of things that in environments that i can be in and um so networking is is huge man you should never stop talking to people and just trying to just build especially if you're trying to do something yourself and you're new to it you know mm-hmm. someone else has already done it they've been great at it or trying to do what you're trying to do and m- made mistakes so you can learn from the good the bad and the ugly and um, so if you're trying to get into any um, career, especially the medical device world, it like I don't know anyone who I work with in my company um, in this district division on the West Florida side that didn't know someone who got them in the door. So I was the only one that didn't have a recommendation mm-hmm. to get in the door at, uh, for my company Sheesh. out of like 25 people. Didn't have anyone who recommended me. Everyone else was a recommendation from someone else, a friend of a friend who worked for another company. And that's what the world is. I mean, that's yeah. how the rich get rich. That's how, you know, the everyone continues to build wealth is not trying to always add someone else in. It's keeping the people close to them and continuing to build and, you know, build their network. Perfect time to bring this in because I was going to bring this up as well. I know me and you kind of met also on Financial Insight um, when you were yeah. still in there. And, um, and how do you, man, you just do so much things and now you're balancing out even doing the stock market. Um, what do you got for people with that? Um, just like with your finance? Um, I mean, the finance side, once, once you know, it, it's another interesting story. So I just purchased a house this past um, 
in the heart of COVID when nobody was buying a house, nobody mm-hmm. wanted to buy a house, everyone was afraid. I'm like, yeah, I think this is a good time. House prices sank. They were literally not putting one house in the ground. Literally. So you got some back in 2020 before this I bubble got, started going up? My, my house, I got my house in, what year is it? 2021. I got my, I signed the papers in, in June of 2020. They didn't put one house in the ground in my area for the first time ever in the history of Lennar, my home builder, ever. They didn't put one house in the ground. So when I got my deal, I literally laid out exactly how I wanted it, what I wanted, and how I wanted it, and they accommodated everything. They called me to this day and told me that they, I was the last person they did that for because obviously after that, in July, everything shot back up. But um, having my money in the bank for you know such a long period of time and watching it gain nothing in that home, whole home buying process was like an eye opener. And Mike Jones, shout out to Mike Jones, um, started the financial insight. Jonathan asked him a lot of questions too, starting off. Um, so shout out to him too. But looking at my money in the bank and seeing the interest that it accrued over such a, a long period of time, but a short of like literally little to nothing. I'm like, what am I doing <laughs> right now? Literally, I told you how much you can make off a commission check and it's like exactly making nothing for me. Just I just made there. it was like nothing for me sitting there and I just had the wheels start turning. Um, start seeing people post about certain things mm-hmm. and I'm like, yeah, something got to change, man. It's, this is not, the lifestyle I'm trying to live and, and have for my family, my generational wealth that, you know, everybody's like pretty much preaching about now, which shout out to anybody who's trying to build generational wealth because that's important. Like you got to have something for your kids, kids, kids. And if I can do that and if I can start that trend, um, I'll do the hard part and have them, you know, reap the blessings from it. Cool, cool. And um, if anything, this might be like super perfect for you since, like I said, you you are very busy with your work. You got American football on top of that. And now you got your money working for you, like a passive income. Mm-hmm. It's just building and building there. Like anything that you do basically just makes money. Your work, yeah. your um, your hobby that you play gives may, uh, pays you money. And then your money that you get from that makes you money. You see what I'm talking about now. Yeah, yeah, come on now. <laughs> and that's how the rich get rich. Yeah, seriously. And um, brick by brick, man, it's, mm-hmm. I always tell, um, you know, the kids who I, you know, do agility training with and training with, I'm like, it's just daily deposits, man. We're not out here looking to to make you, you know, the best player in the world. The like next LeBron today. James. <laughs> no, nah, yeah. that's not what we're doing, man. Like, you just put in daily deposits and continue to just build off that and say, go for the stock market. It's like, man, I, everyone wanted to get greedy. You're like nobody who got in early didn't want to be greedy and greed. Like everyone says, you know, that 20% adds up and I've learned that so much now. And I'm like, man, this 20% really <laughs> does add up. And yep. there's very few stocks that, you know, I'm comfortable with holding long-term, mm. but and you know, obviously, you know, EV, different um, energy sectors and That's stuff like favorite that. Favorite like, right there, yeah. The it, it, it's, it's sit it and forget it. I'm cool with. It. But those twenty percent where I can just go in for a nice swing play or a nice, uh, a nice, you know, s- squeeze, a gamma squeeze, mm-hmm. whatever, whatever the squeeze is. Yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm not looking for the hundred percent anymore. <laughs> I promise yep. you. <laughs> Everybody's always looking for that, you know, hundred percent, two hundred percent gain. Like they're they're already up 80, 90 percent and just sitting yeah. there, you know, yeah. and just and be like, like and most people don't realize, like, you know, it's a lot that goes into like the DD and just, you know, doing your own research. And mm-hmm. so people who do that, I respect them like nobody's business, because that's again, that's another job outside of some of these guys who actually have a job. And you think about how much work they put in it and how early they get in it. They should they should be the ones seeing those huge gains like they knew it and they're <laughs> alerting you as it's going to happen, not when it's like exactly. they're already in these plays. And I learned that, you know, the hard way. I'm like, man, I'm OK with the, my 20 percent. You know, if I can get, you know, two or three of those a week and even one of one of them a week, I'm, I'm OK with it. You know, exactly. Um, Last last thing about all this finance stuff, man. Um. What advice would you give for somebody that's um, like 21, 22 years old, right? Getting into your job. Um, what would your advice would they do with their money? Man, um, my biggest advice would be um, obviously, you know, 
being able to support yourself is number one, you know, never give what you can't, you know, what you can't afford to give. Like that's number one. Like, you know, a lot of people even now want to put money in the stock market and you're, you know, suffering to pay bills or different things. Like, I don't think that that's a smart thing to do. I think like it will come a time where you can put $20 or $30 for it. Like again, deposits, like make those daily deposits that you can and continue to like build on it. Like, um, so my, my advice would just be to continue just to make those daily deposits, man. And, and like, don't try to shoot for the stars. Like it, it's, it's okay to <laughs> not be a millionaire tomorrow. Like, you know, most people, most young per- people, like you said, 21 year old, you're not going to, it's very few millionaires. That, so it's, it's okay to not live, try to live that lifestyle being that millionaire thinking I'm going to get that tomorrow. Like, man, make them deposits and when you get my age, because I didn't know this back, like you said, a 21 year old, I wish I would have. I didn't know it. In <laughs> yeah. at 21. Like, that's what, eight, nine years ago. If I would have invested in Bitcoin, I probably wouldn't be talking to you. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> Me too. I'd be chilling on the beach somewhere. <laughs> yeah, but, um, you know, just like, man, like, and, um, don't be, I mean, obviously, don't be afraid, you know, mm-hmm. um, to take risks, but. You know, the risk. Minimize that risk. Min- minimize, yes, yeah, what yep. it is, man. Minimize your risk and make them daily deposits and, and watch them add up, you know. Cool, cool. But, um, that's all I think I got for you tonight, man. Is there anything else you, um, anybody you want to give a shout out to? Your family, friends, anything like that? Yeah, man. I just shout out to my Louisiana family, um, my wife, kids. You know, they've been with me through the whole grind of everything we talked about. So it, mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's never easy, but it's always, you know, like I said, certain things that become rewarding when you put in the grind and you can kind of like see the, the you know, the fruits of your labor. Um, yeah. Shout out to Sports Debaters, a hey. funny <laughs> sports group on, on, on Facebook, you know, and, uh, like I said, shout out to the people who actually got me interested, you know, got us connected in, in different aspects of life. Mike Jones, Jonathan, because um, you know, those guys do a, a great job Hell in the man. financial world because is is most people, you know, even if it's something as simple as, you know, making an um, investment in AMC, which is, you know, the hot thing right now, is mm-hmm. most people wouldn't have made that investment if it wasn't for someone telling someone, telling someone about that page or, you know, being able to um, engage on the page like that. So um, it all comes to back guys. to that networking that you were just talking yeah. about, man. That's, that's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is, man. So, um, yeah, I definitely give a shout out to those guys and. I mean, most of all, appreciate you having me on. I definitely, oh, yeah. Appreciate you coming on, man, and taking the time, yeah. too, in your busy life, man. So appreciate you coming along. And um, all right, man. Have a good night, man. Peace out. All right. Same to you, man. I appreciate it.